Hey guys, it's Penguin here and welcome back to another gold making video. In today's video, we are going to be covering five more markets that are doing great in 9.2.7 with the semi region wide auction house. Now, before we get into that, I do just want to say that this is part three. So if you haven't already, I highly recommend watching the previous two videos, whether that's before this one or after. Spoiler alert, all of those items are still making me a ton of gold, and I don't repeat any in this video. So if you're somebody who is looking to maximize your stock, I highly recommend checking that out. But without further ado, we will go right into this video. As always, if you guys appreciate and enjoy the content, leaving a like would be amazing, and if you want to see more, subscribing would be awesome as well. But here we go. So to get started, we have two items from Legion Engineering, and this is the Auto Hammer and Gun Shoes. Now, if you guys are unsure what these items are, Auto Hammer is basically a portable repair bench. This is really good for raiding or doing dungeons. A lot of people carry these in current Shadowlands content. Now, the thing about the Auto Hammer, which makes it kind of less valuable on this list, is that it's a little bit harder to get. If you guys are familiar with the Legion kind of profession system, the Auto Hammer is one of the items that has ranks. And there is rank 1, rank 2, and rank 3. And if you have the highest rank, you will be able to craft it for the cheapest way possible, as you just need less total materials. And so in terms of actually making profit with this item, you normally need that rank 3. Now the ranks themselves are very easy to get. You will get rank 2 by the time you finish your Legion questline for engineering. However, the third one comes from a world quest. And this is kind of where the time element comes in, because you have to wait for that world quest to come active, and then you can go and get that rank 3. So it's not necessarily hard, but you may have to wait a little bit, depending on the day you do this quest. Now, what I really want to talk about are gun shoes, which is another utility item. However, it does not have ranks. And in order to get the recipe, you just have to complete, yet again, the Legion Engineering questline. Basically, you go and learn engineering, and I believe it's about 14 quests or so in that you unlock the gun shoes. The awesome thing about it is they sell very, very fast. You craft them in stacks of 10, and they are relatively cheap. Currently, I believe I can make about 10 gold profit on each, but sometimes that falls to about 5 gold, and sometimes it increases even to 15. Next on the list, which will be very surprising, is glyphs. And to anybody who has been in the glyph market for the past few weeks, with this auction house change, are probably thinking, okay, Penguin, you've lost your mind. But I'm not talking about old world glyphs, sadly. I wish I was. I am talking about Shadowlands glyphs. If you guys are unfamiliar, Shadowlands actually has glyphs. They are technically called marks, and they were added in patch 9.1.5. I have a video covering exactly how to get all of them, which I will leave in the description down below. I really like that video, and hopefully it will give you an idea on how to actually get these. And just a spoiler alert, they are not actually hard to get. Most of the time you are just traveling, but they are pretty easy to unlock. But because of these glyphs are not just learnable from the trainer, I believe that is why these items are still profitable. Now I play on the US servers on the NA region, so I can't exactly speak for the Europeans, but currently on the NA region, the low end of Shadowlands glyphs are going for 25 gold profit apiece. On the high end, they are going for almost over 50 gold profit per piece. Which is awesome. Once again, these are commodities, so they are region wide, which means you will likely get a ton of sales. That is how it's been with me, and they are relatively very cheap. Just because of the Nightshade and Death Blossom prices has created inks to be very, very cheap. Now something I do want to highlight quickly right here is if you guys are using default TSM for milling, this is something you don't want to do. There's another creator named Koya who has released custom price sources that deals with milling and prospecting. 
I've been using them basically since they've come out, and I recommend them to anybody. So if you're somebody who gets these glyphs and they are not profitable, definitely go check out that video. Yet again, it will be in the description, and it'll help you out. Next on the list, which I have covered in previous videos, but not directly in this series, is two specific mounts. First of all, as always, all mounts are worth it as long as they're profitable. I would never say never actually craft this specific mount because they all do very well. However, there's two simple ones I want to highlight, and this is the flying machine as well as the flying carpet. The reason why I highlight these is that they require level one tailoring or engineering. For example, the flying carpet requires level one wrath tailoring. So all you have to do is go to Old World Dalaran, pick up tailoring, and you have the recipe. Then you can go ahead and craft it. Currently, once again, these mounts will be server side, but I can make about 500 gold profit per carpet. Flying machines are just as easy, however, they come from Outland Engineering. So you need to make your way to Satrath City, go find Engineering, and there you go, you have the flying machine. Generally, I can make about 400 gold profit per machine, and I generally sell at least one of these mounts per day. Sometimes it'll be a flying carpet, sometimes it'll be a flying machine. Actually, yesterday I sold two flying machines in one day, and this is on my Medium Pop server. Keep in mind, these are non-commodities, so these are server-side, but they are so easy to craft and they bring in a pretty good amount of profit. The next one we have on the list is an alchemy item. Now, if you guys have watched the previous videos, I talk about the transmute masteries and all of those materials, but I want to highlight potion mastery, specifically potion of treasure finding. This is a very popular potion that is used in farming. For example, if you guys go farm volatile water or volatile fire to make some gold, generally people use a treasure finding potion to get some extra items from those elementals. And these are super profitable if you have potion mastery. Very similar to the Transmute Mastery, it gives you about 20% extra potions. Just yesterday, I did a test run. I crafted 100 potions, and I was left with 121. So I got about 21 extra potions. Right now on the NA region, without Transmute Mastery, you can make about 4 gold per potion. However, with Potion Mastery, you can make about 20 gold profit per potion. Crafting cost is about 97 gold. And if you divide that by 1.2, you get your quote-unquote true crafting cost of 81 gold. And right now, they're selling for a little bit over 100 gold. So, Potion of Treasure Finding, Potion Mastery specifically, is doing great, and I highly recommend. And alright, our last category, which I have highlighted this a little bit before, kind of in my very, very early 9.2.7 videos, kind of like the mounts, but I can't stress this market enough, and this is Old World Gems from Jewel Crafting. Specifically, I have four written down, and this is the Sage Agates, the Crimson Spinals, the Queen's Garnet, as well as the Saber's Eye. All of these come from different versions and expansions of Jewel Crafting, however, they all sell very well, and it's just a simple flip. For example, yesterday I was able to pick up about 100 Sage Agate for 199 gold each. Currently, I have sold almost all of them, and I sell them for 247 gold. Of course, there's an auction house cut in there, but that's about, you know, a 40 gold profit per gem. The Crimson Spinal, I can kind of double my money. I buy the uncut version for about 20 gold, and the cut version sells anywhere between 30 to 40 gold. The Queen's Garnet is a little bit more on the expensive side. They are sometimes profitable, sometimes not. And then same thing goes with the Saber's Eye. Now, the biggest thing about this market is that it changes drastically. For example, yet again, if we go back to that Sage Agate, today I log on and at the time of recording, the uncut version is up to 235 compared to the sub 200 that I paid yesterday. 
Right now, if I look at the Crimson Spinal, they are also a little bit over 20 gold, so they're not as cheap yet again as they were yesterday. And this is just the common theme of these gems. People buy them out, people reset them, you know, things get cancelled, things get expired, and you know, the prices constantly change. So as always with everything on this list, please, please, please check back. You know, a common thing that happens because we are now all competing with each other with commodities, somebody might see this video and buy up all of the cheap sage agate. You go to check and it's making you negative 20 gold. However, give it a week, give it a few days, people will stop checking those markets, they will forget about it, and who knows, maybe Sage Agate becomes 20 gold profit instead of 20 gold loss. It really just depends, so please don't forget about these items, write them down if you need to, and just always, always check back. All right, all right, all right, this is Future Editing Penguin just coming in to give you one more item recommendation. Technically, this didn't make the list because it does require some reputation farming. However, I do think it is highly, highly worth it. And this is a Pandaren leatherworking pattern, and actually two of them. This is the Shadow Leather Leg Armor, as well as the Anger Hide Leg Armor. If you guys have been familiar with Twink items or leveling gear and enchants, you are probably familiar with these two items. These are one of the most popular reasons why these are in demand. Now, in order to get these, you need to be honored with the Golden Lotus, which is a faction in Pandaria. It is actually pretty easy to get, and you only need honored. For the past few days, I have rediscovered this item after, you know, not touching them since the merge, and they have sold out every single day I've sold them. Once again, they are commodities with a very high sell rate, so if you're somebody who has a leather worker out there who wants to collect two more patterns, definitely go for it. But thank you for staying to the end of this video, and past Penguin, take it away. But guys, with that being said, that is the list for today's video. Hopefully some of these will be helpful. All of these I have been selling in the past few weeks, and they have been making me a crazy amount of gold. If you guys have any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out, whether that's through Discord or the comments down below. I'm always trying to help you guys out, so if something looks weird, if you guys have other suggestions, feel free to let me know. But yeah guys, thank you so much for watching. If you guys want to, feel free to join the Discord, that is the best place to just hang out and be a part of our amazing community. And as always everybody, have a good day.